Hello and welcome to another teaching from 119 Ministries. Our ministry believes that the whole Bible is still true and directly related to our lives today. If you would like to know more about what we believe and teach, please visit us at testeverything.net. We hope that you enjoy studying and testing the following teaching. I can't recall exactly what grade it was, perhaps second or third grade, but one of my classmates, for whatever reason, in front of the whole class, happened to mention to the teacher that the Bible says we're to not eat pig. In today's easily triggered world, maybe that would cause the SWAT team to show up or a swarm of students and parents to have a visit to a crisis center. But this was the 1980s in a small town of 800 people. Our whole school, from kindergarten to eighth grade, was less than 200 students. Bible conversations could actually happen without the world ending. What I recall to be a child's seemingly random response to the teacher reading Charlotte's Web, the statement itself left me a little stunned. My family follows the Bible. I follow the Bible. We go to church. We eat pig. How do I not know this? My confusion did not last long. The teacher quickly responded. We were told that when Jesus died, he made it so that we could eat pig, because today we have refrigerators to keep it safe to eat. So. We don't need to worry about that anymore. Ah, that makes sense, at least according to my kid brain. Thanks, teacher, for clearing that up. Now, if I was smarter at the time, I might have asked how that worked for 1,900 years of no refrigeration. But Charlotte's Web was more of my speed at the moment, and so she proceeded to read to the class, and I gave the matter a little more thought. It would be decades before I questioned the application of Leviticus 11 again in my faith. Man is so smart that we made refrigerators, and now some of God's perfect instructions are irrelevant, or at least I naively believed as a child. Basically, it is suggesting that man has progressed to be smarter than God. We might not think it or say it, but we sure act like it at times. Or is it that God is smarter than us, despite how smart we think we are? Our scientists have done things which nobody's ever done before. Yeah, yeah, but your scientists were so preoccupied with whether or not they could, they didn't stop to think if they should. Romans chapter 1. Claiming to be wise, they became fools. Proverbs chapter 1. The fear of Yahweh is the beginning of knowledge. Fools despise wisdom and instruction. Is it reasonable to suggest that the creator of everything has our best interests in mind? when he says something to the effect of, I love you, and I want the best for you, so you are to be set apart, and thus, this is what you should eat, and this is what you should not eat. Is he saying that because he loves us, wants the best for us, and wants to bless us? Or are his words in Leviticus 11 some sort of barbaric, outdated nonsense designed to limit the experience of our taste buds? Did Yahweh say, well, as long as you refrigerate the pig meat, and then cook it really, really well, then that negates my concerns for you eating it. No, he did not say that. He could have, but he didn't. Man says that, but God said no such thing. Man has now made no distinction between the unclean and the clean, because they say God has made it okay, when God has said no such thing. On such, he has not spoken. Ezekiel 22. Her priests have done violence to my law and have profaned my holy things. They have made no distinction between the holy and the common. Neither have they taught a difference between the unclean and the clean. And they have disregarded my Sabbath so that I am profaned among them. Her princes in her midst are like wolves tearing the prey, shedding blood, destroying lives to get dishonest gain. And her prophets have smeared whitewash for them, seeing false visions and divining lies for them, saying, Thus says Yahweh Elohim, when Yahweh has not spoken. Man says it. They say there is no difference between clean and unclean. But Yahweh has not spoken. Man has a talent for doing things his own way. It never worked out well in the Bible, countless times. So why should it be any different now? We should have enough faith in Yahweh to believe him when he basically says, Trust me and have faith in me. There are things I created for you to eat, and things that are not good for you to eat. There is a reason for it. 
Our Messiah placed that much faith in the Father in following his ways. Our Messiah ate according to Leviticus 11. Maybe we should follow the ways of our Messiah. Interestingly enough, the progress of science has not nullified Yahweh's infinite wisdom discerning for us what is and is not food, but actually validated the sound reasoning behind Leviticus 11. Pigs have not really changed in 2,000 years. None of the unclean animals in Leviticus 11 have changed. Pigs are still pigs and lobsters are still lobsters. The problem about such animals as food, then, still exists today. Most of us today know what toxins are and why they should be avoided. They are essentially poisons for our body. While our body is somewhat equipped with various tools to expunge toxins, such as our liver, kidney, lymph nodes, etc., the less exposure we have to such things, the better it often goes for us in the long run. We even know what parasites are, and we know that we have an immune system and digestive tract that help fight off such things. However, many fail to recognize the value of the perfect instructions in Leviticus 11. Applying Leviticus 11 as true words of the Bible actually helps us minimize toxins and parasites and maximize nutritional value. Maximizing nutrition and minimizing ingesting harmful organisms and compounds is the simplest formula to increase the likelihood of a long, healthy life. Maybe Yahweh is actually telling us the truth when he said, My son, do not forget my teaching, but let your heart keep my commandments. For the length of days and years in life and peace they will add to you. Unclean animals are basically Yahweh's vacuum cleaners. They were created to clean environments, and in doing so, they harbor parasites, toxins, bacteria, and viruses, in excess. So, how does that work? Modern science has shown that pigs carry a very high toxic load, making them unsafe for human consumption. Pigs are basically scavengers. They welcome eating anything they come into contact with, regardless of the source, whether it be their own feces or even their own dead carcasses. Because of this, their bodies take in massive amounts of viruses and parasites. They are the primary carriers of many pathogenic organisms. A Consumer Reports investigation found that an impressive 69% of all raw pork samples tested were contaminated with high amounts of volatile microorganisms. This particular bacteria causes fever and gastrointestinal stress and could lead even to a fatal infection. Pigs are more toxic than clean animals for a reason. One of the biblical requirements for an animal to be clean is that the animal must chew the cud. These animals are called ruminants. They have four stomachs that digest and regurgitate food, employing a unique process that permits the complete digestion. The major ruminants are cow, sheep, and goats. Pigs are different. They metabolize food absurdly quickly through just one stomach, and the process only takes about four hours. A cow, for example, takes 24 hours to digest food. This is 20 extra hours to rid the food of excess toxins during the digestive process. The more simple digestive system of a pig does not allow for this, and consequently, toxins are carried into the fat cells and organs of the pig itself. Another problem for the pig is the lack of sweat glands. The ability to sweat is a primary mechanism that enables the elimination of toxins and waste. Because of how pigs were designed, when we consume pig meat, we take in all these additional microorganisms and environmental toxins to a much greater quantity, well beyond than what our Creator intended. While it might be suggested that modern farming methods and domestication of pigs may have solved for the pig's poor eating habits, the fact of the matter is, is that the pig still does not have a system designed to effectively purge toxins and parasites, and even pig meat today, when tested, still reflects this. Even still, they still eat their own feces and other disgusting habits. Many of the toxins are not neutralized at high heat. Even when high heat is utilized for cooking pork in hopes that it kills off the dangerous parasites, the high heat produces cancer-causing agents by damaging much of the essential fats. So, in an attempt to mitigate the parasite load, most experts suggest cooking pork at high heat. But for those who are interested in limiting the intake of cancer-causing free radicals, then high heat should be avoided. One has to choose between a greater chance of parasites or the likelihood of cancer or other chronic diseases. The alternative is just to follow the Bible. Take Leviticus 11 as truth 
And praise God that he cares so much for us that he tells us the right way to live that leads to blessings for his people. If one examines many of the other animals defined by Leviticus 11 as unclean, two common denominators present themselves. First, they are likely cleaning up the environment, recklessly careless in what they consume. Secondly, they do not have the means to efficiently remove toxins or other disease-causing biological agents. It is interesting, in today's health-crazed world, that many blindly follow various diets and protocols. But if one suggests the biblical diet, we are often told how tasty bacon is and how God changed his mind on what he said is good and not good to eat. Let's get back to trusting God and glorifying him. Perhaps we will see blessings as a result. We pray that you've been blessed by this teaching. And remember, continue to test everything. Shalom. It is because of you, our generous supporters, who make it possible to offer these high-quality teachings completely free of charge. If you feel led to support 119 Ministries so that we can continue this effort, please visit testeverything.net and click on the Support 119 tab. Learn how you can partner with us to take the whole Word of God to the nations.